Hello everyone, I am Travis Ellis, a product owner here at cPanel, and today I'm going to be talking about gray listing. Just to give us a little bit of an agenda of what's going on, first off I'm going to be talking about who I am and why you should listen to what I'm talking about. Second, we're going to talk about gray listing, the crux of the whole point here. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with a little bit about what we want to do in the future here with our fighting of spam. First, who am I? Why should you trust me at all? Well, as I said earlier, I am Travis Ellis. I'm a product owner at cPanel Inc., uh, the company that makes the best web hosting control panel in the world. I'm also a product owner of the team SpiderPig, as well as a team in internal development. But today we're going to be talking about the work of the team SpiderPig. It's a, a great group of people. We worked on a lot of the CP Hulk improvements. We did gray listing from beginning to end, from inception and concept, all the way to the product that you're using today and we've been working on a whole bunch of other projects while we've been coming here through cPanel. We recently finished Remote MySQL and are taking on two-factor authentication up here in the future. Now, I've taken a tour of the company. I actually started literally in the basement of the company fixing computers. I was a part-time desktop admin. I got an internship as I was finishing college to become part of the marketing team. I was an intern. It's been about a year and a half there. I got a promotion or two to become full-time for moving over to our sales department or accounts management and worked with a Mario and people of that nature as a technical product specialist. What that allowed me to do is to go out to partners and people all over the world and talk to them about how awesome cPanel is and really bring the, the technical aspect of what the company was doing to our customers. After that, technical TPS, technical product specialist, got split off into its own department where I worked on a whole slew of special projects. I worked on the feature site that many of you know and love and sometimes hate because we don't get to everything. We also worked on the applications catalog as well as a whole bunch of our sales force and just general things that the customer ends up interacting with. After the technical product specialist team was disbanded because they wanted to take that work and bring it over to the support department, I got brought over into development. Now, when in development, I was a technical writer for about a year, and much to my former manager's chagrin, I ended up moving up to being a product owner of Team SpiderPig. Now, I'm not telling you all this just because look how awesome it is that I started at the bottom and now I'm here. It actually has a point. I was in a whole bunch of different roles in different parts of the company where I had a lot of exposure to the outside world. And because of that, I get a ton of spam like a lot of spam a day, specifically the spam that wants me to retile my floor in my, in my garage for some reason, which I don't even own a garage, so I don't really understand why I need to retile my floor, as well as all of the education possibilities that I have coming in the future, and finally, all of the Russian mail order brides that I may or may not be interested in. Which brings me to the problem. Spam is listed as the number one problem for many hosting providers. In my time out talking to people, I've talked to companies such as HostGator, EIG, as well as some of the smaller people all over the world, and they tell you that spam just eats up so much of their bandwidth and their processing power, and it's just plain bad. Now, cPanel already knows that spam is a problem, and we've given you a lot of tools to start. We give you Spam Assassin, Box Trapper, which a lot of people find is very controversial, I understand. Mail filtering just that one Iraqi company that keeps trying to send me a whole bunch of spam, I just have it go to a, a, a black hole and I never see it again, as well as RBLs. The problem is, is we still get spam. As much as we try and fight it, it still happens every day. So there's not a silver bullet for fighting spam. It's not one thing that's gonna stop spam from happening. It's going to be a whole suite of tools. Introducing gray listing. Gray listing is just another tool in your belt to help you get through fighting all your spam and mitigating as much of that as possible. But what is gray listing? Gray listing is mail deferral. Exum, which is our, the mail transit authority that cPanel uses, gray listing the process of deferring emails from unknown senders. When the email arrives, gray listing causes the server to return a message that boils down to, hey, I'm busy at the moment, try again in a bit. Valid mail transfer agents, MTAs like Exum, will automatically retry multiple times. They have times from several minutes to last for several days. Invalid MTAs, such as the ones that are hacked and used by spammers, simply give up and move on to the next enticing spam target. We use these retry attempts as a way of weeding out good email from bad. Now, we looked at a lot of daemons to do this. There's a lot of people that have off-the-shelf 
gray listing daemons that they've used for many years. And we looked at a lot, like a lot, a lot. We found that people are already using gray listing with cPanel. And we found that we just didn't really care for them. So we decided to write our own because, well, our developers decided it was going to be really interesting and we could do some really cool stuff. Also, we wanted to extend the functionality of gray listing down the line and we wanted to have something that we were very comfortable with and we could really manipulate. So cPanel created its own gray listing daemon, CP Gray, that runs at SMTP receipt time. That means it happens before any real data is sent. This happens if you're familiar with how XM works in the 200 block. The CP Gray daemon looks for a triplet, a source IP, a source email address, and a destination IP address. This time frame is configurable. CP Gray will defer all email to the triplet for a set initial block time. Again, this time frame is configurable. After that initial block time has expired, the system will accept email from that triplet until the max block time has expired. That sounds complicated, and I will explain what all those mean in a second. But first, let's look at the interface. At the top of the interface here, you're going to see what you look at when you first hit the gray listing icon in WHM. You can see it's disabled, and we have this nice little slider with a red LED looking thing next to it. And when you hit that slider, it's going to turn on. You see here a whole bunch of different options here, and they don't really make a whole lot of sense. So let's go through what they look like. Right there, there's a couple of arrows next to each of the, the lines and the headings of what they do. We have the first one, the initial deferral period in minutes. When you hit the eye icon, the number of minutes during which the server defers email from an unknown subject. So this is the first time that people are going to try hitting your server and they're going to send that triplet for the first time. This is how long we're essentially going to say, no, I'm busy right now, come back later. Essentially, you sending off the, uh, the guy who's selling you knives every time they come by the door. Though I've never had a guy try and sell me knives. More Jehovah's Witness. Next, we have the recent acceptance period. This is the number of minutes during which we will accept a mail retry attempt. Now, this is after the initial deferral period ends, but we're still waiting for them to, things like XM to retry. All the MTAs have different times in which they will retry. So we went ahead and set this for 240 minutes. That's four hours. So within four hours, as long as they try after the 10 minutes that we initially set, then we will accept their mail and send it on to the user. Now, after that time's over, we have a record expiration time. Now, the record expiration time is starts at the same time that the other two do, but it's how long we will accept mail from that triplet. So we will take it for up to, we have right now set up to four days, I believe. And so you can go through and you can configure this to any time you want. The max that we have set is two months that you can have. And during that time, you'll take any mail from that triplet that you see and we'll automatically put it right into your customer's inbox. At the bottom here, we do have one more option, which is bypass gray listing for hosts with valid SPF. We just call this SPF bypass. It's a little complicated to, to spit that out whenever we're talking about it walking through the floor. And what essentially we do here is we bypass gray listing if they have a valid SPF record. Now we did turn this on initially for all of our customers, but it's actually caused a whole bunch of spam to get through. When we first set this up, not a lot of people were using SPF for their email addresses as far as spammers go. We found recently spammers have actually started turning SPF on specifically because cPanel started allowed this SPF bypass. So you may ask yourself, why not DKIM? DKIM is sent as part of the message. It's actually part of the whole message block that you get in the 400 period. Now, as I told you earlier, gray listing happens during 200. This means that we take gray listing and, and have it affect before any email is actually sent to the customer as far as data goes. So DKIM is not actually sent when gray listing comes into effect. Since because of that, we just can't do DKIM checking. And because of our SPF bypass, we recently learned that a lot of people are turning DKIM on anyways because they're buying domains very cheaply, spamming for a 72 hour period as fast as they can and then burning that domain and moving to the next one. And because DKIM is free to enable, this isn't any more cost for them. So the next interface that you're gonna see inside of Gray Listing is gonna be Trusted Host which is essentially you saying, my friends would totally never see me sp send me spam. 
This gives you the ability to trust IP addresses and ranges. We accept CIDR ranges as well as dash ranges. As you can see here at the bottom of the slide, we have an example of what these look at, uh, slash 16 or a dash between two IP ranges. Be careful, we have had one customer who uh, fat fingered an address and allowed a, a sixth of the internet to spam him and I was wondering why gray listing wasn't working. That was, a, that was a fun day to figure out. Now this is what the interface looks like. It's again, just a big field box. If you've used the CP, gray, uh, CP Hulk before, which is our brute force protection, this is gonna look very similar. We are the same team that designed that interface, so we made it look very similar and customizable. And we added a whole bunch of options to this um, that you see exactly in the CP Hulk. You see we also have an eye here as well. So you can see what type of CRD ranges you can accept as well as what type of other things you can put in here. You may also notice that we have support for IPv6. CP Gray does support IPv6, however, XM doesn't at this point. I worked on the team that was trying to add IPv6 support to XM, and it's just not quite there yet. We found an upstream bug that XM's still working on. We do have plans to allow IPv6 to happen for the rest of the services, like XM, but it's just not there yet. The uh, CodeMonkeys team will be working on that later this year. All right, this is all fine and dandy, and we added a whole bunch of things to this, but there's just one problem, Google. Google's always a problem, it seems. They use mail clustering, which essentially means that they don't just have one server that sends a whole bunch of mail to their customers. They have several servers, and each one of these servers has a different IP address. So each time they retry, they don't necessarily retry from, a different, from the same IP address. It's a different IP address each time. So it means that the triplet that we're used to looking for may be different every single time and you never get your email. So you can use SPF bypassing, however, you're gonna allow a lot of other spam to get through. So we thought, how can we take care of this? How can we fix this? So we had the first fix. We decided to kickstart the trusted hosted list. What this does is that we went ahead and looked up a whole bunch of SPF text records to identify which IP addresses Google was using and looked through all of it. There was a whole bunch of different articles that Google had. We went through and went, went ahead and added Outlook, Yahoo, a whole slew of them. But we really didn't know what we were looking for. This is our first foray and I literally sat in an office and went through a whole bunch of SPF records as we went through and fixed localization at the same time. And yeah, that didn't work. We could only update these IP addresses with uh, releases. We could only support a small amount of mail systems because it really just cluttered the trusted host interface. Because people were adding their own things to this, they weren't able to tell what was theirs and what was ours that we had kickstarted. So we've recently worked on something new, which I like to call the new hotness. This is the common mail tabs, mail systems tab. Choose who you want to get mail from, subscribe from auto updates from cPanel, and the best part about this is it can be updated out of band from the regular cPanel builds. So who did we decide to support? We are still working on this. I actually got an email from our CEO last night about adding more people to this supported range. Right now, we decided just to support the, the ones that we knew quite a bit about, uh, AOL, Apple. I could read all these off to you, but it's right here. Look through them. If you use the CP gray listing or just the gray listing interface, you're gonna see all these in here. We're constantly adding more. We recently got an email last night talking about adding UPS or FedEx to this list so that you can get, track your confirmation of when your delivery is gonna show up to your office without it getting gray listed. Here you can see the interface. We kept this really simple. We tried not to overcomplicate things. There's just a checkbox on the left that says you want to trust this company, and then a checkbox on the right that says auto update, which means that you automatically subscribe from updates for this company from cPanel. You can see on the top here, we added automatically trust new mail providers. What this allows you to do is as cPanel adds these new mail providers out of band, you can automatically have them added to your whitelist essentially of trusted mail providers. On the top right, you see the gear icon. This allows you to do bulk actions such as automatically trust all in the list or automatically auto update all of the ones that are in the list. And the last thing we added to this interface was be, would be reports. You gotta figure out who's getting gray listed, but it's just a simple report with a lot of functionality. 
Here you can see an example of a server that's actually in the wild. This is from the server that I run to test my cPanel interface. You see we have the triplet here, the sender IP address, the from address, and the to address. You see how many times we've deferred that, uh, that email and when it got accepted and how many accepted we've accepted from that triplet set. You see when we created it, if you actually hover over it, it will give you the epoch time of the server. You can see when the block expire time happened and the must retry time as well as the finally the record expire time. We did add a icon on the far right that's a little plus symbol. If you click that, it will pop out. Here you can add IP ranges straight from the reports page. You can add slash 24, slash 16, or just the single IP address. Now, gray listing has a, a lot of give and take, but it's my mail and I want it now. So cPanel users can opt out of gray listing from their interface. Each domain has its own control for gray listing. So that means that your customers can decide that's great and dandy, but I don't want you to block any, I don't want you to defer any of my emails. I want it now. And so what you can have them do is just go into their cPanel interface, hit the gray listing icon, pop up in their interface, and click beside each domain that they want to bypass out of gray listing. It's very simple, and we've actually seen a lot of success with people feeling very comfortable with this, giving them the option to get in and out of this. Now, webmail users. A lot of people have webmail that they're using through cPanel, and they just don't know why they're not getting their email. Things are getting gray listed. So we added this run report icon to track delivery, which is already a feature inside of webmail. If you don't put anything in here, it actually tracks the email that you've been receiving and sending. So in this interface, you can see here I clicked run report without having anything in here. And you can see at the very bottom, the last two lines, it says defer due to gray listing. This tells me exactly who and what got deferred in my system. And if it is big enough deal to me, I can contact my hosting provider and tell them, hey, this IP address is trusted people. This is important for me getting my money. Please add this to the trusted host list. So finally, let's talk a little bit about the results. How is gray listing working? We have it running on over 500 servers. It's blocked 22 million detected spam messages. And we find it to be just really successful. It's been very popularly talked about on the edge users list. The feature site is blowing up. I have to respond to it every single day about features that people want to add to gray listing because they're just really excited about it. I even get emails from the CEO talking about how excited he is about gray listing and more things that he wants to cram in before we release our next major version. Finally, the last point on my agenda is the future of spam fighting. We intend to revamp our spam assassin implementation completely. If I have my way, I want to completely scrap how we're doing it and start from the bottom up. I want to actually support Bayesian filtering. I want to actually adjust our scoring. I want to do things that work to help Spam Assassin work better. We found that Spam Assassin is not really working the way it's meant to be inside of cPanel because we don't automatically adjust these rules back and forth. So we've added our own custom rules to this, but they're just stopgap measures. They're never going to be a full functioning spam assessment implementation until we completely redo things. Which leads me to this question. How are you fighting spam? In the comments below, tell me how you're fighting spam. Are you using no listing, spam boxes, some other trick that I've never heard of before? We really want to find out how you're fighting spam for your customers so that we can implement that for you out of the box so you're not doing something custom on the side that you have to fight with every time that cPanel updates. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Let me know what you're thinking about and how you're implementing gray listing. If you need to contact me, you can contact me at travis at cpanel.net. You can find me on Twitter at, at Travis Ellis, or you can visit me my About Me page. This gives you contact information about my Facebook, my LinkedIn, and all of my other communication methods. Feel free to contact me and know, let me know what you think about gray listing.